A day after the Hindu festival of the Bawali festival ended, the festive mood in the air still lingers as preparations for the upcoming Chhat festival are in full swing. Essentially a festival of the Madhishi community, people from different walks of life has also started embracing the Chhat festival in recent time as it is reported that 21 different locations in the capital including Kamal Pokhari, Bishnumati, Naku, Gahana Pokhari among others have been decorated for the Chhat festivities. Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the top stories of the hour. The draft of election-related laws prepared by the Election Commission remains stranded for the past four months. The laws aim at the betterment of election system. The prices for majority of vegetables in wholesale markets of Kathmandu go down, with most vegetables being sold at less than 20 rupees per kilogram. UN Security Council calls for urgent and extended humanitarian pauses in Gaza. Israel Army centers its operation around Al Shifa Hospital. And Australia take early wickets against South Africa as Proteus struggle in the second semi final of the ongoing ICC World Cup 2023. The draft on election-related laws furnished by the Election Commission to better manage the election mechanism and political parties has been collecting dust for the past four months. The draft law, including provisions to ensure that Nepali nationals living abroad could vote and reject any candidate deemed unfit to run the election, was sent to the Home Ministry on 3rd of July earlier this year. However, the ministry is yet to begin discussions. The Commission has warned the next election will have to be conducted in the same old manner if new law is not endorsed within a year. Based on the regular process, the draft is to be presented to the Council of Ministers after deliberations by the Home Minister. This will be followed by the Cabinet registering the draft at the Parliament as a bill. The Commission has included the provision of allowing Nepali nationals abroad to vote, which is in line with the Supreme Court order, along with the provision of no vote. Likewise, the draft law prohibits anyone facing corruption allegation, meeting the 33% quota of female candidates and barring the same person from repeat, repeated candidacy, among others. Experts say the delay by the ministry in moving ahead with the draft law suggests that the government lacks interest in the laws. Meanwhile, the commission has been piling pressure on the government to review the draft law, warning that the next election won't be much different in the absence of a new law. Preparations have also begun in the capital for the Chhat festival as river banks of Bagmati, Monohara along with ponds are being cleaned up along with various shrines. Special worship sites are being established in 21 different locations in the capital including Gauri Ghat, Kamal Pokhari, Bishnumati, Nokhu, Gahana Pokhari and Kupandol. Works are underway to clean Bagmati River section in Gauri Ghat and clearing of weeds along with putting up of tents and tarpaulins and installing the statues of Chati Mata. Special decorations are being made at the river banks and water bodies for Chhat. A special committee for the management of Chhat Festival in Gauri Ghat has said all preparations will be complete by Saturday. The four-day-long Chhat Festival will begin from tomorrow with the main day of the festival on Sunday as devotees will worship the sun and take fast. It is believed that fasting during the Chhat Festival rids one of their sorrow and miseries. On the first day of Chhat, devotees take a holy dip in water and take a fast with just one meal for the day. The following day, they prepare and offer rice pudding to Chhati Mata and consume it themselves and avoid salt the whole day, limiting their food intake to one portion of fruits. On the third and the main day of Chhat festival, devotees worship the setting sun. They conclude the festival the next morning by worshipping the rising sun. Chhat that originally was limited to the Tarai region has been celebrated across the country in recent time. The prices for majority of the vegetables in wholesale markets of Kathmandu has gone down, with most vegetables available at less than 20 rupees per kilogram. Cauliflowers, eggplant, radish and beans cost between 10 to 15 rupees per kilogram at Kalimati Vegetable Market. Vendors say they've put up the vegetables at low rates due to lack of demand as thousands have left the capital to celebrate festivals. 
However, the prices of onions and potatoes have remained unchanged. Potatoes are selling at around 40 rupees per kilogram, while onions at 90 rupees as the double taxation from India and not Nepal continues on these vegetables. The Nepal side imposes 13% VAT on these vegetables on top of the 40% tax imposed by the Indian side. Around 1,500 tons of vegetables are sold through 24 wholesale markets across the capital on a daily basis. Supplies come from Kavri, Nuakot, Dhading, Chitwan, among other districts. It is worth noting that despite the decrease in prices at wholesale markets, retailers have been selling vegetables at their own rates. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. The question is why have works related to expansion of electricity transmission line been delayed? Your options are A. Incapable Nepal Electricity Authority, B. Administrative complications, and C. Protest of the local residents. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. U.S. President Joe Biden has met with Chinese President Xi Jinping, the first time the rival leaders have spoken in person in more than a year. Chinese-China关系是一项最重要的双边关系，中美关系要放在世界百年变局加速演进，这个大背景下来思考和谋划，为两国人民带来福祉，为人类进步啊展现担当。Mr. President, we know each other for a long time. Our meetings have always been candid, straightforward, and useful. I value our conversation because I think it's paramount that you and I understand each other clearly, leader to leader, with no misconceptions or miscommunication. We have to ensure that competition does not veer into conflict. And we also have to manage it responsibly. The two countries, which are the world's biggest carbon emitters, agreed on further measures to tackle climate change but stopped short of committing to end the use of fossil fuels. They promised to cooperate to slow methane emissions, a particularly potent greenhouse gas, and support global efforts to triple renewable energy by 2030. The two sides also agreed to cooperate in the fight against drug trafficking, and China agreed to crack down on chemical companies in order to stem the tide of illegal fentanyl into the U.S., which has contributed to a rise in overdose deaths. The two countries also agreed to resume military-to-military -military communication, a step that was high on the Americans' wish list. The military links were cut by China last year after then U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan. Relations deteriorated further after a suspected Chinese spy balloon floated across the continental U.S. earlier this year before being shot down over the Atlantic Ocean. As the meeting began, Biden told Xi he valued the conversation and that it would ensure there were no misconceptions or miscommunication. In response, Xi said, Conflict and confrontation has unbearable consequences for both the sides. The two countries are still far apart on many issues. While agreeing to disagree peacefully is a start, some observers warned against overly optimistic predictions. Israel has said that its jets attacked the Gaza house of Ismail Haniyeh, widely considered as the overall Hamas leader. Haniyeh lives in Qatar, but Israel said the house was being used by a Hamas meeting place. Elsewhere, Palestinian media say around 50 people were killed by an airstrike in the central Gaza Strip. Israel has dropped leaflets in the south of Gaza, warning people in four towns to find safety. Earlier today, Israel continued its operation at the Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, which it says was being used as Hamas base. Israel began striking Gaza after Hamas's 7th of October attacks, in which 1,200 people were killed and the hostages were taken. The Hamas-run health ministry says more than 11,500 people have been killed in Gaza since then. 
U.S. President Joe Biden has continued to defend Israel's war on Gaza, saying it was non-realistic to expect Israel to stop Gaza war, reiterating claim of Hamas based at Al-Shifa Hospital without offering proof. Hamas also rejected an earlier Israeli claims of having uncovered weapons during Wednesday's raid. The World Food Program has said food aid for more than half a million refugees who have fled from Sudan to Chad will run out next month without extra funding. More than 540,000 refugees have crossed from Sudan into Chad since war erupted seven months ago between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces, according to International Organization for Migration. Many have fled from West Darfur where ethnically driven violence and mass killings erupted again this month in the state capital, El Janina, pushing thousands more people to flee. Those who have arrived this year joined refugees and displaced people already in camps in Chad, where Honorat described conditions as extremely hard. Sudan's conflict has also contributed to spreading hunger within the country. On Wednesday, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization said it had distributed seeds for cereals that could feed 13 million to 19 million people after farming was badly disrupted by the war's impact. More than 20 million out of a total population of 49 million in Sudan are facing high levels of acute fuel insecurity, according to assessment by the UN, NGOs and other groups. At least 26 people have been killed in a fire at a coal company's office building in northern China, while another 38 were injured. The fire broke out at 6.50 a.m. local time yesterday at the four-story Yongzhu Coal Industry Joint Building in Luliang City, located in the country's top coal producing hub of Shanxi. The cause of the fire was still under investigation. There was no official statement from the fire department or the police station. Calls to the company have not been answered as per Reuters agency. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.